Hello. I just wasted 20 minutes trying to record this. Let's try again. Last week, I recorded an intro guide to the new TFT set, Rise of the Elements. Today, we're going to try to be specific with our starting as well as ending comps and how to get there. In this video, we're going to be covering a set amount of comps so that the video doesn't get too long and so that we can really focus and deep dive into this kind of stuff. Uh, we'll be talking about Predators, Blade Masters, uh, Woodland, as well as Mages and Light. The last two being relatively short because it's pretty simple to see how to play late game versions of them. The first composition and one of the compositions that you'll see the most is Predator. Predator right now opens with these four units. You have Skarner, Warwick, Rek'Sai, Kog'Maw. The MVP units in, in, in these four is going to be the Rek'Sai and the Kog'Maw. Rek'Sai being generally the overall best unit because he does true damage and a lot of it on his abilities. Um, and Kog'Maw kind of being uh, your main backline carry threat, at least early game. Now that you've seen the first four units, this is what the in-game comp looks like. And these are two different variations of, of an in-game Predator comp. The first iteration is the most common, which is going to be Predator Glacial Berserker Poison. This composition is super good. It covers a lot of bases in terms of dealing with magic damage units, as well as having a very strong uh, damage carry and can execute from pretty much any range. The second composition that we're going to be covering is a two ranger composition where instead of throwing away Skarner, you use Skarner, you use Ash, and you use Twitch instead of Kog'Maw. In the first composition, your carry unit is going to be mainly Olaf. Olaf will do the majority of your damage and you want to make sure you have items set for this character. Your secondary carry is going to be your Kogma or whatever backliner that you have. Predator has this really interesting trait where they actually interact with items. A lot of old synergies didn't do this, but if an item brings a unit below 25%, then they will die. So the most common things to, to go on Kogma are like so, things like Seraphs, things like Luden's Echo, because the Luden's Echo Splash could potentially kill four people uh, with a single ulti. Additionally, things like Ionic Spark and Thornmail also will kill, so these are very powerful items on Predators in general. Uh, additionally, and this is more of like a tertiary carry thing, if you have more tank items and you don't know who to put it on, uh, I would definitely default toward Mundo or Rek'Sai. Rek'Sai is the strongest, strongest standalone predator because he just does incredible amounts of damage. In this composition, uh, or any composition with predator at any point can put in Nocturne to, to obtain two steel for the mid game. That's something that you want to keep in mind. But my rule of thumb is that if you're getting more Skarners than you are getting Rek'Sai's, you can consider this composition. Additionally, if you're getting a lot of uh, items that are good for Rangers, but not so, so much that you're, you have too many uh, items and you can't just stack Olaf, then this is a comp for you. So a lot of physical damage uh, items or on-hit items are great if you're going to go the secondary Ranger comp. Uh, primarily, and first and foremost, Olaf is your carry. You're going to want items like Rage Blade, like BT, like Hush or Disarm to be able to kind of splash his utility as well as uh, make sure he has high DPS uptime. Um, additionally, if you have a lot of AD items and you're going to Ranger build with Skarner, uh, then you're going to want things like Rage Blade. You're going to want things like Red Buff. Uh, on hit items will go on Twitch as well as direct damage items will go on Ash. Ash and Twitch relatively are weaker backliners, so you only want to go this build if you have the items to support or the units to support this different variant. Secondly, let's talk about Blade Masters. Blade Masters is the comp that I've probably played the most personally, especially for the opening week of TFT. Uh, I've done almost every variation of Blade Masters possible, and I want to say you should look to go this composition, especially if you hit early. If you hit an early Blade Master spat, this is the composition for you. Blade Masters are really, really strong. Your your opening Blade Masters are probably going to be Sivir, as well as a Blade Master spat. And your late game composition ends with your end game comp ends with Desert Cloud Mystic Four Blades. It's very, very powerful, and the combination of Janna, Master Yi, and Yasuo is super deadly, giving you. Cloud as well as Blade Master as well as Mystic. Now, how do you end up running this composition? Well, there's two main variants, just like there's two variants with Predator. Both have their pros and cons. In this situation, you kind of decide to go whichever one works based on what units you find. Because generally speaking, the items, uh, the items in this build, you tend to stack Nocturne as well as Olaf first and Sivir second. Uh, if you get the items for either, you'd go pretty identical items for both. I think you would have Blade Master Spat plus Rage Blade as on your main carry, and then you'd go a situational third item, whether it be Disarm or Hush 
or IE or BT or Deathblade, something like that. Uh, since they both have built-in sustain, a BT isn't necessary, but sometimes nice. It, the main thing about this isn't the, your items per se, but rather the units you get. This composition has two desert, and you build two desert from the Sivir plus X. If you're getting Renekton and you have an early Renekton, uh, as well as you hit an Olaf, that's a good sign to go the Predator, three Predator version. If you hit an early Kha'Zix or you have a lot of Nocturnes, that's a great sign to go the Assassin variant. Uh, it really just matters on what you hit and it actually helps out a lot that you have two different uh, options to pivot to. Because in case your entire lobby is looking to fish for Olaf's or looking to get a lot of Nocturnes, you have a lot of room to kind of work with what you want. The third component I cover is Woodlands. Woodlands is really interesting in the sense that Woodland in general has no synergies except for itself, except for one unit, which is LeBlanc. These are the four Woodland units. Uh, you have LeBlanc, you have Nico, you have Maokai, and you have Ivern. And really, you want to look at LeBlanc to look at, at synergies at how you build Woodland Mages into the mid and late game. So the most common thing to do with, with Woodlands is to go Assassins or Mages or both. Both of those are relatively optimal, and you might even end with both of them at the very end. Usually what ends up happening is Woodlands end up transitioning and you end up selling something, but up until... I would say level, like the start of level 7, you're keeping Woodlands in for a long time. Usually what ends up happening is you end up stacking the Maokai with, with items and you end up then getting the LeBlanc and then pivoting from there. So whether you go three mages with both the Ocean Mages, Vladimir and Syndra for early pressure is very common. Alternatively, you can go Assassins with Diana, Kiana. It's also a very common pivot as well. Whatever you find more of is generally what you're going to be going for early. Additionally, you can look to pivot more toward one or two different areas depending on how many items you get. If you get more mage-oriented items, then definitely consider that, I would say. A lot of these compositions I tell you, these are the early game units and this is the end game comp. The thing about Woodlands is usually Woodlands are not in your end game comp at all. Uh, if you're going to go Assassins, you can end up stacking Diana or stacking Nocturne or stacking Kiana. And if you end up going uh, Mages, you generally want to be stacking Brand because he's very, very powerful. But for, but before then, you can stack Syndra, you can stack Vlad. Um, usually, surprisingly enough, starting Woodlands means aside from the Maokai where you put tank items on, no other units in Woodland get carry items. They're usually almost always secondary or it's just synergy uh, needing units that helps you carry out the mid early game. Uh, the last two comps I want to talk about are relatively straightforward. S both six mages and six light are things that are very, very difficult to mess up because you're using the six, six mages, <laughs> the six actual mages that exist in the game and six lights. Six of the seven lights that exist, or six lights, I think only six lights that exist in the game as well. So what happens with mages? Well, the way that mages work are that you start with Syndra, as well as Vladimir, as well as LeBlanc. Usually, if you hit the tier two Vladimir, you should think about this comp this composition, especially if you're on maybe an ocean-centric map. Uh, this composition is it starts with this and ends with usually four oceans, uh, and six mages. So you take the two ocean wardens, Nautilus and Thresh, and then you add the six mages behind it, and your main carry is almost always going to be the Brand. Brand is a heavy hitting monster from this position. Uh, very, very strong, and this is a very solid kind of end game composition. Uh, you can also go for stuff like Vagar 3 and potentially things like Syndra 3, uh, uh, but for the most part, your end game unit, generally speaking, should be. A mage that can output a lot of AoE damage, and Bran is the strongest mage in the game. So he is your main carry. You want to put stuff like Seraphs on him, which is very, very powerful. The last composition I want to talk about is Light. Light is a composition uh, alongside Woodland and Predator that gets uh, hyper-rolled a lot. It's not something that's necessary though, and I'm going to talk to you about Light just in general. So the main Light units are going to be Nasus, Vayne, and then there's like Soraka, Aatrox, Jax. The earliest ones are Nasus, Jax, and Vayne. Uh, and what happens is, you, the, this is, is easy to talk about because you literally just put the six light units into the game. You know, the most important thing about light is having strong items for uh, your Vayne, which is usually your strongest backline carry, carry as well as hitting the Yorick 2. Yorick 2 is phenomenal. He's actually just an all-star unit by himself. Each individual light minion that he summons gives your overall team light buff. So essentially he's worth like two or three or four additional light members on your team 
by himself. He is a very, very powerful threat, and he's pretty much the pivot of your entire team comp. This is a composition that just shoves the six light units in, and then from that position, Master Yi is incredible to put in from that position at seven. He gets Mystic as well as Blades, and then at that point, it's up to you. Uh, if you get a light spatula, you can look to put in Zed, which is phenomenal as well. He's one of the best light spat carriers in the game. Uh, or you can just put in a standard Ranger. Usually Ranger is the most common. A Kindred is the most common from this position because it gives healing reduction. It's overall a good unit and synergizes well with Master Yi. Uh, for units that you want to stack, your main carry is going to be your Vayne. Your secondary carry is actually usually going to be uh, your Jax or your Aatrox or your any tier 3 unit frontline. Important items to note are that Jax scales really, really well with Iceborne Gauntlet because he has 100% dodge when he's spinning his ulti and every single auto that goes into that with Iceborne uh, ends up spreading the field. So he's very, very powerful with that. Vayne herself wants stuff like Hurricane, stuff like Rage Blade are probably the two most core items. And afterwards, you kind of can build what you want, whether it's another Hurricane, whether it's a Death Blade, whether uh, pretty much anything else damage oriented wise is going to work out for you. If you have enough items and you can get the Master Yi too, he's very, very powerful. Additionally, the one unit you don't want to sleep on in this composition is Soraka. She she makes it so other people can't gain mana, and that's incredibly powerful. Thank you guys for in, for watching. I'll be covering additional comps later in, in videos down the line. I didn't want to cover over everything, or else this video would have taken like 25 plus minutes. Uh, but hopefully, you have a good idea of how to start and end compositions, and maybe some things that you can do in the middle to be able to help out and streamline those compositions into winning games. Hope you guys enjoy. I'll see you guys later.